Good morning, everyone. I'd like to call this meeting to order. And I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are in Treaty 1 territory and the traditional homeland of the Métis Nation. My name is Carrie Linklater. I'm your chairperson today. I am joined on the panel to my left, Mr. Robert Grodzik, and uh, my far left, Mr. Ray Mazakot. Our city assessor is Nathan Kupfer, and our admin secretary is Fada Aziz. We will be hearing applications for revision of the assessment role in accordance with the Municipal Assessment Act. The matters for which revision is requested have been described in each application and we will limit discussion to those matters. The statement that applicants or the assessor make at this hearing are sworn testimony and anyone speaking to the matters must be sworn in. Be advised that comparison of assessments of properties are not considered evidence of market value by the board. The board is appointed annually by City Council and is independent of it and the City Administration. It makes its decisions on the basis of the evidence provided at this hearing and issues a written order that will be mailed to all parties as soon as possible. Please note that the board's decisions with respect to an application may be appealed to the Manitoba Municipal Board if the matter pertains to assessed value or classification or to the Court of Queen's Bench if the matter pertains to the application of exemptions from taxation. Should you wish to appeal, information on how to do so will be included with the board's order. With respect to the hearing process, I will confirm the matters to be addressed with each applicant following the swearing in. We will then have the assessor's testimony followed by questions that the applicant may have, and then the applicant's testimony followed by questions. Each side will have an opportunity to summarize if they wish. Once all the evidence about an application has been brought forward, the applicant may leave. The process will repeat for each item on the docket today. The session will close after all the applications have been heard and the board will deliberate in private and make its decisions. You will receive the order by registered mail as soon as possible. And as information, all public hearings are recorded and will be part of the public record. If I could ask if everybody could make sure their phones are turned off. And our first property is going to be 403 Hudson Street. If you'd like to come forward. I just want to affirm, please state your full name. Thank you. And you affirm the evidence you're about to present the truth and the truth. Thank you. 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 Mr. Cuthbert, if you'd like to start us off when you're ready. 403 Hudson Street, parcel ID number 0307-0002-000. It's a one-story single-family dwelling in the Maid Bank neighborhood area, constructed in 1971. 1,083 square feet living area, full basement with basement finish, one full bath, two half bathrooms with one shower. The home has central air conditioning, two fireplaces, and an attached multi-garage. Parables 1 through 3 are all in the Maid Bank neighborhood as well. They're all one-story single-family dwellings, constructed between 1956 and 1961. Living area ranging from a low of 1,004 square feet to a high of 1,037 square feet. All have full basements with basement finish, similar to the subject. Bathroom counts range from two full to one full and a half with a shower. Comparable 1 has an air conditioner, similar to the subject, while comparables 2 and 3 do not. None of the comparables have fireplaces. Comparables 2 and 3 have multi-garages, similar to the subject, and comparable 4 has no garage. All three comparables, as well as the subject, have the same rail line influence. They're all backing onto the railway there. Time-adjusted sale price per square foot for the three comparables range from a low of $280,000 to a high of $327,700, or a time-adjusted sale price per square foot ranging from a low of $278.88 to a high of $316.01. The subject property's 2020 assessment is at $323,000, or $298.25 per square foot. The homeowner was last in contact with the department 
uh, for the 2020 RAP program. I uh, spoke to a member of our department. Uh, her assessment had been reduced uh, for previous assessments, uh, but the assessor noted that uh, this time it was look, it appeared like it was supported by the comparables. Uh, the homeowner declined an inspection, but did disclose that the house has been renovated, added a second fireplace and a shower, which were previously not on the record. Uh, this actually increased the 2020 value slightly above the 323 mark, but the assessor chose to keep it at 323 as that was supported by the comparables. Uh, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you have any questions of the assessor of what he has just stated? No. No? Okay. Uh, Mr. Mazepot? No questions. I have no questions. Okay. So, Mr. Kupfer, uh, you did not inspect this property? I have not. Okay. But somebody from the RAP program, they didn't inspect it, but they... We offered an inspection and it was right. declined according to the notes. Right. Um, so, are there any notes from the RAP program? That, that was the entirety of the entry from, uh, from the assessor who met with uh, Ms. Angleton at the time. Okay. That was all right, yeah. Um, did you have a chance to bring the MLS listings from the comparables? I did. giving me the opportunity to express my concerns about the 14% increase in my property assessment from 283000 to 323000 When I contacted two different real estate agents to see my house, they both agreed that they could only reasonably list my house and expect to receive 295000 to 305000 there are three factors that impact the value of my house, which perhaps are not accounted for in the algorithm that determines property tax increases. The first factor is that my house backs onto the railway tracks. And I see that in your comparables, you've, you've, you've addressed that issue. However, I will say that we live on the main CN line to the States. And when we bought the house in 2012, the train traffic was much lighter. The trains are now longer and much heavier as they are overwhelmingly made up of tanker cars carrying flammable materials. With no new pipelines being built, these products are moved through our neighborhoods. After the horrible train derailment at Lac Magentique, people are rightfully wary of buying along tracks. The trains are far more intrusive as they are almost twice as long as they used to be, so they make twice the noise and the dust when they rumble through our neighborhood. They are a real in intrusion into life in our community now. The vibrations from these very heavy trains rattles the glasses in my china cabinet and the drywall around my fireplace chimney rubs and shapes. If I had to make the decision again, I wouldn't buy where we did. I was told that this was a $20,000 deduction off the value of my home. If you look at the first comparable 529, 9 Hudson Street, it also backs onto the tracks and is similar in size to my house and sold for $268,000. The second factor is that my house is on the west side of Pembina Highway. On the comparables designations, the neighborhood is West Pembina and it is significantly different than East Pembina. Both agents told me that if my house was anywhere on the east side of Pembina Highway in Fort Gary, I could easily sell it for what it was valued in the proposed increase. However, the west side of Pembina, between Pembina and the tracks, is a shabbier neighborhood with a real mix of properties, and I would be lucky to get 300000 In addition, there are several brand new infills, like split blouse properties that have been split and then infills have been built. And these are selling for the, are in the 325000 range, and these suppress the prices on older homes as well. 
The third factor is that my house has only two bedrooms. In this price range, my home is considered a starter home. These customers are looking for three bedrooms, and I was told by, these both, or by both agents that this was a $20,000 deduction off the value of my home. Comparable number two is a similar house that is across the tracks at 129 Marshall Bay. It's not backing onto the tra tracks and is close to a lovely little park. Because it had only two bedrooms, however, it sold for $295,000. There are other comparables attached that show the range of sales in my neighborhood and also on the west side of, tra of the tracks, which is a little nicer. There does seem to be a cap at around $300,000, no matter whether they are on a quiet street, close to the school, or even have granite countertops. My house was built on, as an infill on a lot that stayed empty for almost 20 years because it is so narrow. So many of these comparables are, home, par comparables are homes that are older than mine, but the two main strikes against it, the tracks and the two bedrooms, still stand. We have done modest renovations to the house, painting anything that could be painted, and we have updated the kitchen and the bathrooms with very simple Home Depot finishes and with no structural changes. I have included some information about the double attached garage from the property inspection done when we bought the property. It was recommended that we plan on tearing it down, down at some time in the future. It was a dubious, dubious condition then and due to the recent dry years, the foundation and the floor has moved and shifted further considerably. In conclusion, I ask you to consider the comments of Peter Squire, Winnipeg real estate spokesman, made in the Free Press on November the 12th, 2019. He said that the average price for a detached home in Winnipeg dropped by 2.7% in the period of October 2018 to October 2019. My observation and those of the realtors indicate that property values in my neighborhood have not increased by 14%. And I should add that I turned down the inspection in the spring because my daughter has several chronic illnesses and she was quite ill at the time and she lives in the basement. And so I thought it would be stressful for her. Just a heart condition and other health issues. Thank you. Mr. Kupfer, do you have any questions? Thank you for that. Are you aware that your 2020 assessment value is based on a market date of April 1st, 2018? So a decrease in sale prices between 2018 and 2019 should be factored into our next assessment model. That's what the sales are based on for that. Likewise, with the comparables that you've chosen here, they're all after April 1st, 2018. So they're going to be used for our future assessment model for our 2022 values. All right. So you're saying that prices were like those are the prices from the summer of that of that um, season there are not a lot of houses that sell before april for that year i'm saying like like so my, should i have gone back to 2000 and the summer before 2017 and, and early 2018 okay. is what we're looking at for the 2020 values at this time all, right. all the sales afterwards should be factored into the 2022 um, model well we might be seeing each other again just so you know for next time if there is okay, then, but then I can look at your comparables if your comparables are um, the ones that you, you know are within the time frame that you're referring to yep, and they're all along the rail as well so I tried to isolate yeah. that, um, that variable um, I looked it up in our assessment system and just did a, an on-off click and it affects about 15,000 in assessed value just so you know so if your house was across the street not on the rail line it would be about 15,000 higher yeah, in our model um, things that are really pushing up uh, your assessment are that it's a fully finished basement, like you said, your daughter that lives down there, and also that there's a third bathroom in the house, which none of the other homes would have. Um, I think your best argument here is that if there's two bedrooms, so there's probably two people living in the house, what, what would you need the third bathroom for if you were to sell that on the open market? Like, it wouldn't add a whole lot of extra value. Um, but obviously that isn't accounted for in a mass appraisal system. So that's, that's the argument I've made for you at this point. Yeah. Um, but based on these comparables, like I said, we've got a pretty tight grouping between about 280 and 310 per square foot. 
um, based on the level of finishings, whether it's got that second floor bathroom or not, um, the air conditioner, and then the double detached garage as well. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mazakot? No questions. The, um, here you said your daughter lives in the basement. Is it a sort of a self-contained uh, living area in terms no, of it just, it's just no, a bedroom and a bedroom, and she uses the the rec room as her living living room. Okay. And you would mentioned um, that you've made some upgrades after moving in. How recent was that? Um, first year after we moved in. Okay, so that's been in place for. Yeah. And you, and you bought in 2012. Is that right? Right. Okay. Um, for 259. Right. And six months later, the city came and asked, and like when this next spring, their evalu the evaluation was much higher. Um, and you know we appealed that because we had only bought it a number of months ago. Right. Okay. Um, I don't have any other questions. Okay. Thank you. Um, so you've mentioned the damage to your garage, or your garage is in poor condition. Do you have um, any kind of a, a price or quote on how much it would cost? No, I haven't. Okay. I don't have that. Because I, quite frankly, I, I, there's no way that I could do that. So yeah. I haven't investigated that. Right. And I didn't realize, like, I know they, it was spoken of, like, with shingles and, uh, or, you know, with structural issue, foundation issues, but I didn't know that replacing the garage was something I could bring. Okay. Is that with, um, when you had somebody out to look at the garage, they were looking at the floor, right? Um, that was pillar to post, and they were um, the... They did the ins property inspection. Okay. So there's also some, like in the pictures that are provided, there's some mm -hmm. signs that the the eaves troughing has been has also shifted. Okay. So it's not just the floor; it's the no. entire garage. Okay. And the picture, it's kind of small, but it also shows that the one corner, it, it it's pushed out, and I've had people in to look at replacing the floor, but they said that if or not replace well replacing the floor, I would have to lift the garage and then replace it, and now there's structural issues that probably wouldn't, like, they, they would need to be resolved as well. But I, I also had somebody just come, at, come in and look at, um, you know, pumping that kind of foam or mud underneath. Yes, yeah. And they said it was the floor was too, far, too badly damaged, mm -hmm. that they couldn't, they felt it would just make things worse and maybe make the building more structurally unsound. Okay. Um, so you did the renovations in 2013? Yeah, for the most part. Okay. And, um, sorry, you did the bathrooms? Yes. And you said you The bathroom downstairs was as is, but the two upstairs bathroom, we replaced tile on the wall and um, put in a um, new shower, new tub. Right. And that was, you said you used Home Depot? Yeah, which like it's laminate, like yeah, and it's um, laminate countertops, IKEA cabinets, um, which you can probably recognize. Very nice. <laughs> so no quartz or granite or anything fancy. Um, and the kitchen, you didn't touch the kitchen. The kitchen no, was... the kitchen we did as well. Okay, IKEA. Um, actually, no, it's a Hyderabad colony. Oh, <laughs> that that built the cabinets. Uh, do you know what the cost approximately was for that? For the kitchen and the bathrooms? The kitchen and the bathrooms together would have been $25,000 because I have friends that help me with it. Okay. That was labor and supplies? Yes. Okay. Very good friends. Um, and how far are you from the rails, from the railroad, from the tracks? Uh, you can see it in the picture. Um, it, it's at the bottom of my garden, so... Okay. Um, the houses are all pretty much the same distance from the track on that stretch. They're sort of staggered. The road is at an angle, so yeah, there. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Mr. Kupfer, I just want to redirect to you. Um, the applicant had mentioned that there's a reduction being close to a rail line. Is it 20000 or what does the city consider for that? This one uh, specifically I checked is at 14000 Is that 14? Yeah. Okay, thank so. you. So, can I ask a question at this mm -hmm. point or is, am I out of order? Um, go ahead. So, it, what would, so you've taken that for, the 14000 for the railway into, into account. So, you're saying that my property, would, my building would be even worth more than Correct. 323. An extra 14,000 if it was uh, one street, okay. street over not backing onto the railway. Yeah. And then, uh, like I said, also we've already overridden the value down for when uh, the same company came in and spoke to us and we updated the property characteristics. And then we overrode it down by another 9,000 already. Okay. Um, and also, Mr. Kupfer, uh, does the city give any consideration on a two bedroom house? In terms of saleability? Okay. Sorry about that. When I looked at the comparables, that was not something that was yeah. fact. Sorry, I'm just asking questions. Um, and uh, what was the increase in this area over the last assessment? Region 8, so it would be 6.96 over two years. Okay. Um, do you have the previous assessment? Just to include? Yeah, it had been um, reduced. Uh, it was reduced down to 283,000, 2018 2019 assessment. Do you know what it had previously been that year? Before it was reduced down. Um, no, unfortunately, I don't know what it was reduced from. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dudley Avenue, parcel ID number 120 
It's in the Earl Grey neighborhood area. It's this two-story side-by-side dwelling constructed in 1969, 2,400, uh, 2400 square feet. That's 1,200 square feet side. Full basement with basement finish, two full bathrooms, two half bathrooms, central air conditioning, and a detached single garage, and a lot size, just over 5,000 square feet. Comparables one and two are in the Lord Roberts area. Comparable three is in Grand Park, and comparable four uh, is also in the Earl Grey. They're a combination of two story side by sides and duplexes, constructed between 1914 and 1961, with a few tight grouping of effective ages. Living areas range from a low of 1,936 square feet to a high of 2,720 square feet. All have full basements. Only comparable four has some basement finish. Uh, all have between two and three and a half baths. Uh, none of the comparables have air conditioning. None of the comparables have fireplaces. Uh, and only comparable four has a uh, detached garage. Lot sizes range from a low of 3,060 square feet to a high of 5,441 square feet. Time adjusted sale prices for the four comparables range from a low of 381,900 to a high of 432,900. Or time adjusted sale price for square foot ranging from a low of $159.15 to a high of $204.68. Um, subject property was purchased in 2015 in a private sale, I believe, for $420,000. Uh, we were made aware of a private appraisal that was done for the property uh, with an effective date to December 10th, 2014. The uh, private appraisal had these, uh, the value of 425000 in December 2014. Uh, homeowner last contacted the department in uh, the summer of 2019, June. Um, spoke to a member of our department who simply explained that the 442000 was his previous value uh, from his appeal for 2018-2019 and the 2020 value had been set at 468000 and he can appeal this value if he chooses. He said he will do some research and decide if he wants to file an appeal and evidently he has and now we are here and that's my presentation. Uh, thank you. Did you have any questions about the assessors just presented? Uh, nope. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mazzico? No questions. Just uh, wanted to, in June 2019, when the owner contacted the assessment, the, the value of the property, the assessment at that point was, you mentioned it at? Uh, so 2018-2019, uh, the owner appealed, and it was reduced down to 442. And then for 2020, uh, a member of our department actually did a um, uh, a manual uh, look at it. Uh, our model value is being produced up at around 530,000. They did a uh, look at the comparables and reduced it down to the uh, 468 figure that we're showing for 2020. So they, act, they, they, they looked at the numbers or they actually looked at the property? They looked at the comparables and the property characteristics and decided not, that they didn't do a site inspection. They didn't do a site inspection, no. But based on Oftentimes when there's a, an appeal in the previous year and then the value jumps way up, we'll mm -hmm. do a manual look at it to try and avoid it, another appeal. Right. That's, that's what was done here. And in this case, actually, the, um, the, the change from 442 to 468, I believe, was actually based on our percentage increase for the area. Because I, I did the math and it checks out at 5.8% uh, over two years. So it's 5.8, the kind of average increase in value? It was for that area, yes. So that's, that's what the assessor applied from the previous board's ruling. Now, I, th I think I know this, but I just want to confirm the when you give the characteristics of two baths, two half baths, that's for the entire building or on each side? The entire building. So it'd be like one bath, one full, one half on each? Correct. Unit. Okay. And the central layer would apply to both in both sides of the uh, of the dwelling, right? I believe so. Yes. Okay. Um, I don't have any other questions. Okay. Thank you. Um, sorry, Mr. Cup. For for twenty eighteen, what was the assessment? Uh, the model value was up in the five hundreds. Um, it was peeled and uh, it was brought down to four forty two by the board. Sorry, um, you don't know why it was that high? I really don't know. And that was all model driven? It's all model driven, yes. 
Um, do you have uh, your MLS listings for the comparables? I do. Thank you. Um, also, this subject property is in um, the Earl Grey yes. district, um, and you've got two in Lord Roberts. Would you not say Lord Roberts is a very different area from Earl Grey? No, it's different to some other areas in the city. Uh, it's fairly close by. Um, in terms of location, I would say the best comparable is comparable three uh, on Carter, um, given its proximity to Grant and its proximity to the subject. Okay, not Scotland? Scotland kind of backs onto the corner of M9 Grant, mm -hmm. which I'd consider to be a pretty serious negative influence. Um, and you mentioned the um, in September of 14 there was a, a private assessment? Yes. Sorry, just wondering how you were aware of that. Was that mentioned by the homeowner at the time? I'm assuming it was submitted as part of the uh, previous of the appeal. Evidence? Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. I haven't seen it. Okay. Thank you. And this home has not been inspected? Uh, not to my knowledge, no. If there was a private appraisal done, that's usually enough for us that we won't go out and do an inspection afterwards. Okay. Do you know the last time the city inspected this property? I know from 2015, uh, as part of our sales verification process, spoke with Randy, who said he paid 420000 which he considers market value for property, although it was a private sale. He sent me a bank appraisal indicating value of 425000 as of December 10th, 2014. Um, uh, the assessor reviewed the sales. Sales range from uh, anywhere from 215 all the way up to 460 At that time, the sale appears to be reflective of market value, and it was included in our model for analysis. The best information I have for you. Okay. So no, no actual inspection. Okay. Thank you. Um, if you'd like to give us your presentation. Sure. Um, actually, we agree with the city's comparables. Um, and if you analyze them, I'm not sure how they equate to an assessment value of four hundred sixty-eight thousand. Um, I believe it has something to do with Randy's purchase price. When he purchased this, it was a private sale. Um, I'm a realtor with Monopoly Realty, but I'm here as Randy's personal friend today. I did not have anything to do with the sale of this property. Um, Randy was living on one side for three years, and the owner was um, on the next side. They had some discussions. The owner was thinking of going to the market at $420,000 at the time. Um, I had given Randy my own personal opinion of value at the time, and it was in somewhere in the $395,000 range. I advised Randy to let it go to the open market and we could write an offer. Um, he didn't want the chance that someone might outbid him or um, do a condition-free offer, so he decided to pay $420,000, which he, I, I believe in 2015 he overpaid for it by about $20,000. Um, he has successfully brought the assessment down a number of times, uh, once or twice, once probably. Over the phone, he was told this time because there's a lack of good comparables in his neighborhood, he would have to come to um, the board. So here we are. Um, so it, I, we agree with these comparables, and if you're, we're looking at a sale price as of April 1st, 2018, um, I think we're about $20,000 high. It, it should be around the $448,000 mark, which is not too far off, but. Uh, there, there is one comparable on Academy, 97 Academy, which is a very, very similar property, which you're, you're looking at right now. Um, in terms of value, that one is probably in a better neighborhood. It's considered River Heights, plus it's on Academy. So when you're looking at investment properties, it's more desirable. Uh, you're right on a bus route. Uh, you generally never have vacancies. You just put a for rent sign in the window. And that property sold for $408,000 in 2016, August of 2016. Um, and again, that had a bigger lot, 60 by 120. This one is 50 by 100. And that's also a good comparable. I think based on these comparables, it's it, we're, we're about $20,000 too high. And I, I, and I know uh, the assessor had mentioned that the model 
was kicking out a value of five hundred thousand dollars. I, I'm a realtor, and I, I don't see how the model is producing those, even if you're using the city's comparables. There's nothing in there that would suggest that this property would sell for over $500,000 in 2018. Okay, thank you. Questions? Um, the comparable here, um, basement finish, yes or no? On Academy? Yeah. Um, No, this basement was not finished. No basement finished, okay. Um, it just says 1950 older. Do you know the actual year of construction for the building? No, there was no... 1950 is the actual construction. The actual year of construction? Okay. Were there any photos included with the listing? Um, there were not on this particular listing. Okay, no other questions. Thank you. Mr. Mazzucco? No questions. I have no questions. Um, did you have a chance to uh, inspect the property on Academy? Yes, I did show it to another um, client at, at the time. Okay. And but I thought it was in better condition than Randy's. Randy was paying $800 a month for his side, which was undervalued, admittedly, for the time. Um, when Randy purchased it in 2015, he rented out the side that the owner had previously lived in for $1,300 a month. Um, the Academy was rented at 14 14 a month plus utilities at the time. Um, generally, when you're appraising it or in terms of value, a higher rent will equate to a higher sale price in a duplex. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so it generates higher rent, better location. Um, yeah. um, and can you speak to the condition of the property? Average. Randy's or Academy? Uh, um, Dudley. Dudley? Uh, average. Average. There is a garage, a single detached garage, but it's effectively a teardown. The doors don't open. Um, so it's not used? It, it's used as storage. Okay. Yeah. Not for a vehicle. It, the garage door doesn't open. Okay. And the interior of the home? It's, it's average. It's not terrible. It's a typical rental property. It's, it's clean. Um, hardwood floors? Uh, it's, uh, is there hardwoods on the main floor? Hardwoods, the tiled kitchen. Um, any renovations? Um, the two pieces, the two piece baths and both sides have been updated. And how have they been updated? Um, new toilets, new sinks. Uh, flooring, tile? Flooring was the same. Okay. Okay, so you're asking um, for 442, uh, or sorry, 448, yeah. and your previous assessment was 442? Yes. Okay. And you're aware that there was a 5.8% increase? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. On to um, 16 major drivers. So, can I just learn on the Bible or without it? Sure. Okay. Please state your full name. Full stop. And you affirm the evidence you are about to present is the truth, the whole truth, and that will be the truth. Okay, these two properties is exactly the same. So when we talk about one, it's exactly the same for that. Okay. It's exactly the system. It's the look same. Everything okay. is same. We have to hear both the properties. Oh. Okay. We'll do the second one faster. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Five, um, if there's two properties, only six, so I'll need one for each of the files. So six? Mm -hmm. I, this is twelve. Okay. 
Uh, I won't have nothing in my hand, but it's okay. That's right, you can have one third on. Right. Okay. It's just I wrote Parcel ID number 08000540500. It's in the Varennes neighborhood area. It's a two story row house, four dwelling units, constructed in 2018. Total living area of 3,528 square feet, full basement with basement finish, eight full bathrooms, and four half bathrooms, central air conditioning, no fireplace, and no garage. Uh, this has a lot size of just over 5,000 square feet. Comparables one through four are all four units, multifamily dwellings as well, uh, various shapes and sizes. Comparables one through three are all constructed between 2016 and 2018. All comparable four, uh, Eugenie is the older one. Uh, living areas for the four comparables range from below 2,238 square feet to a high of 5,624 square feet. Comparables one, three, and four all have full finished basements, while well, comparable two does not. Uh, bath counts range from one uh, two full per unit to two full and a half per unit, similar to the subject. Um, the comparables so one through three all have air conditioning, while comparable four does not. None of the comparables have uh, garages. Assessed lot sizes range from a low of 5,621 square feet to a high of 11,813 square feet. Time adjusted sale prices for the four comparables range from a low of 692,000 to a high of 1.067 million, or time-adjusted sale price per square foot, ranging from a low of $189.79 to a high of $421.13. 2020 assessment for the subject property is currently set at $890,000, or $252.27 per square foot. Thank you. Thank you. Did you have any questions of the assessor on what he's just presented? Uh, yes, because the conversion is doing between the property you mentioned is not the same like what we have after. Okay. Uh, the conversion that was the view of this property to uh, 16 measure mm -hmm. is not the same. Uh, some of them are larger by land, uh, some of them are larger units, mm -hmm. uh, constructionally different. Uh, for the finish, you can finish something to will cost you so high, you can finish something to will cost you so low. Mm -hmm. So the conversion is not, I don't agree with the conversion you, know, uh, you have on the, uh, this property. Okay. Well, it's not always easy to find an exact uh, replica of uh, what you built. I went to see, to. I, checked, I checked some of the properties, the way the finish, the way it's done. Yeah. Uh, because actually I need to hire the same contractor before to do the work. Okay. But he was too expensive and I couldn't afford it, so we did it in a different way. Okay. And, uh, uh, what it cost me is what, 480 mm -hmm. for 16 measure, mm -hmm. construction wise. But, uh, Sir, this is just oh. questions on oh, what the assessor. Oh, okay. Just what he has said about the comparables. Okay, that, but th that will be part of your presentation? Sure. Okay. okay. That's it, I guess. Okay, that's fine. Mr. Mazepin? No more questions. Okay. Um, these comparables are kind of all over the place, and I was wondering which of these you would think to be the, the best comparable, if you will. They're in different neighborhoods. Um, I think they're kind of built in the same range except for comparable four. Um, do you have any thoughts as to which one? I would suggest comparable three, um, being in central St. Boniface, um, and being close to St. Mary's is probably our best location-wise. Um, it's a buy level, which throws a price per square foot out of whack, but I think the total sale price is fairly well indicative of uh, the sale price of the subject. Okay. Now, 
The subject property is four units, is it? Yes. And the comparable three, that's a two units? They're all four units. But they are all four units, okay. Um, yeah, there's the, there's no, uh, I guess the subject property doesn't have any uh, uh, factors that affect the price, the, the value, whereas the others have commercial and traffic. I'm just talking my way through this. Sorry. Actually, while you're talking there, I just wanted to point out this one actually should have a commercial influence. And the next property, because when I was going through them and looking at the two, uh, there's slightly different assessments for 16 and for 18 major. And uh, for 18 major, we have a commercial influence on it, and for 16 major, we didn't, which doesn't make any sense because they both back onto the same three and the two story apartment building mm -hmm. uh, behind them. So there actually should be uh, a commercial influence for this one. So a, uh, an apartment is viewed as commercial? Correct. Uh, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. Um, how much does the city um, give an allowance on the commercial reports? It varies depending on the value of the property. Okay. Yeah. And this property? Because this assessment is set at eight hundred and ninety thousand, and the other one is set at eight hundred eighty thousand, I'd have to say it's approximately ten thousand. Even though they're both affected by. Yes, so if I were to apply the commercial influence to, to this in our model, um, it should match up with 18 major, which is at 880 and already has the commercial influence. Okay. Um, so this is a new build in 2018? Yes. So was it inspected? Uh, it would have been inspected, yeah, when it was uh, constructed. Let's see if we for notes. Um, this is a permit to develop a four unit row, uh, row house style fourplex. Each unit is two story with base and finish. Spoke, spoke to the owner and said all was complete by October 1st, 2018. That's when it was added to the roll. Uh, I spoke with a tenant that said that they were actually living there in May of 2018. Um, best comparable is 250 Thomas Berry at 890,000. That's all I've got. So did anybody go out and look at it? Based on the note, I can't 100% say one way or the other, but I, I believe they would have, yeah. Um, what was the cost of the permit? We said it was 480,000? Yes. Not including the land? Uh, 480, just construction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Just clarify your, your point about the commercial influence. Mm -hmm. Did you say that this property mm -hmm. with the 10,000 influence should actually be 880 instead of 890? Yes. Okay. Just wanted to confirm. Mm -hmm. Um, what was the increase in the area from the previous assessment? Uh, this is, well, this would go down to Market Region 8 again at 6.96. This would be South Bolo St. Boniface, so yeah, 6.96. And I'm assuming your comparables are, are sort of all over the map because it's hard to find comparables. New construction for units, uh, yeah. Right. Um, and I'm just wondering, what is the difference exactly between um, a row house and um, a duplex and a side-by-side? -side? How does the city see all of these? Um, like, is a row house are sharing a common wall and it's four across? Yes, and typically it's a mirrored version all the way across. Okay. Um, I would say um, row houses or uh, side-by-sides are duplexes, but not all duplexes are side-by-sides. Because some duplexes are up-down duplexes, right? Okay. Where there's yep. the main floor and the upstairs, whereas all row houses are side by sides. A row house is just multiple side by sides, and a side by side is just two that are mirrored of each other and share a common wall down the middle. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, what was the previous assessment on this property? So when it was first added for 2018, um, the model uh, produced about 816,000 um, for 2018, 2019, and then it jumped to 890 for 2020, 2021. Okay, thank you. That's all my questions. Oh, do you have the comparables?
Sir, if you're going to give us your presentation. Okay. I, I can start? Yes. Oh. Okay, uh, uh, comparing uh, my property to the row house uh, at uh, 422 Valley, Valley uh, it's completely, if you look at the land, it's almost more than double the size of my land, the 7,000 meters field minus 5. Uh, the living area uh, is uh, 5,628. My living area is 3,528. So there's a big difference in uh, the size of the property and the living area. Uh, so I, I agree. I don't agree with the uh, with, uh, with the conversion between my properties and the others. Uh, and when you mention uh, uh, the other property was commercial zone, or some kind of commercial, you say? So in your property, there's an apartment behind it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but mine is not commercial, uh, like commercial land. It no, no, no. It backs onto a commercial property. Oh, okay. so, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. The side, actually, not backing. The side? The side? Yeah, okay. the side of it. Yeah. Okay. Not, uh, um, so I believe, like, I constructed for 480. And uh, the value of the land, 120 as the city value before. Mm -hmm. And which, uh, so I'm, uh, I'm building like almost 290 over uh, my cost of the value. The renting of the property is really low for the first few years. Like I'm, I'm charging more to keep the tenant in because some of them was in zero now during the construction. I'm finishing the basement or so. And uh, I don't believe it. I agree with, with your value on my property. That's why I'm here to, to my uh, The other ones, they have five places. Uh, Ra House, and I believe they have five. They have more options than mine. Uh, mine is basic, very cheap finish, uh, which is other finish is uh, it's very different. Uh, it's brand new so yeah. too much to say. Thank you. Yeah. Um, do you have questions, Mr. Kaplan? Yeah, I'm just going over this, the contract price and the, uh, the evidence you submitted here for... Um, I, just, yeah, I, I submitted the signed contract between me and the contractor. Yeah. yeah. So is this, this what, is this what you paid the contractor? Yes. You yeah. paid the contractor? 400, yeah. yes. Oh, this is per unit, right? Per four, yeah. yeah. Not for the total, yes. Per, okay. per, like 16,480, 18,480. Right. Yes, so this was 960,000. For both. For, for 16 both. and 18 major. Yes. Okay. Did that include, is that all inclusive? Everything. Keys. Did that include the basement finish? Yes. Okay. Uh, what about landscaping? Uh, landscaping, uh, no. That's what I did the landscaping almost uh, $6,000 for landscape. About $6,000. Um, so how long did the whole project take? Like you bought the, when did you buy the land? And I believe 2015. 2015? Yes. And then this is you hired a contractor to do all the building for you? Yes. yes. Okay. So your argument is that you bought the land for 290000 and then you spent three years going through all this building, getting it done. Building per month and all this stuff. Yeah. So when you Actually, I bid 200 or three per each. So 200 three, I bid. Do you know what you're missing here in your cost, your cost breakdown? Yeah, well... What's your profit? Why did you do it? Why did you go through three years and buy the property and go through developing it? You wouldn't sell it for exactly what you bought it, was, it for. I was going to build like uh, four stories, mm -hmm. and the city was requesting to take whatever uh, six meter from the side, another yeah. from the back lane. I have to do concrete, I have to do asphalt, so it was costly. Yeah. The city was asking, me, asking so many stuff to be done. So I stayed the way I am. Like I went actually twice. I think I went to twice, right? Which changes the, uh, the design twice. Which uh, yeah, I need to make more uh, more uh, unit in there. Yeah. Twelve unit, which it was going to be very costly, which I didn't do it. So I went back to the original. So would you sell me eighteen major for six hundred thousand, the total property value per location? Right now? Yeah. I, I sell it you for six eighty. Six hundred. 
That's what you're saying, the total property value per location is? Well, for AK and about 120, that's what the cost. Right, but that's not what the market value is. You wouldn't sell it to me for what it costs you to build, because then you're not making any money. You just three years of work for no reason. I'm not talking about the selling value. So there is finishing. I'm not selling it yet. I love to sell it. Uh, even the appraiser, when it came at higher price, it came at, uh, with the bank in some appraisal after it's finished and all stuff, it came at uh, uh, 700,000. Mm -hmm. That's the appraiser. We went with a bunch of stuff. Uh, so I sell it. I don't know what the market value was. Right I tried to sell one downtown, which I didn't get the price I wanted. Okay. But the finishing there is poor. I can take you there to show you the finishing, basic. Like it's just, it's not. Uh, as you think. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mazakov? I just, I uh, guess I'm a little curious. Uh, the, when you purchased this property, was it just bare of, there was no, it was an old house on it. It was an old house? Yeah. And how much did you pay for the property? Uh, 200, well, for both of them it was four, it was like a package, but I did each one almost 203. Nine, three, yeah, it doesn't say here the 16, it says 2013 for 214, but I bought it in 2015, so this uh, is missing. With the intent of tearing it down and building it? I thought that's what you wanted to do. It was include everything. That's what you wanted to do, that's that's you want to do Yes. Actually, I need to do like apartment block on that. I need to, to have the two la property together. Yes. And I was going different approach and uh, it didn't work, so we have to go back to the original. How do you, you say the land value for location is approximately $120,000? Correct. Where, where does that come from? How did you determine city that? City value before uh, first when uh, taxation was a city value. City taxation? Yes. City value is around uh, 120 But you paid more than that. You for the house, everything, two, yeah, you 200 mean, south almost. Yeah. But you were actually buying the land because your intent was to really That's tear down that house. Yeah, I rented for a while. Yeah. When I, yeah, I, I was renting the house for, yeah. I took 2015, I rent to both of them for a yeah. couple of years that I finished all the paper yeah. work. Yeah. And you paid, uh, well, you paid $960,000 for the... No, for, for both. For both, for both. Yeah, sorry. Plus taxes. Uh, uh, plus yeah. 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 So yeah. You paid a million dollars. And each other. Yes. Okay, that's all my questions. Thank you. Mr. Francis? Thank you. I, I think I've got everything I need. Thank you. Um, sir, did you previously appeal this property? Appeal it? Yes. It's just a new, I didn't. Uh, I didn't uh, oh, so this is first your first time? time. First okay. Time. Um, so, can you speak to the finishings? You said that they were very basic? Yes. So do you have, do they have hardwood floors? No, vinyl. Vinyl yeah. and carpet? Uh, uh, vinyl upstairs too. You Only know, carpet in the basement. Okay. Basement carpet. Okay. Um, so no carpeting in the bedrooms? No. Okay. And the bathrooms in the kitchen, is there Basic. granite? Is there tile? No tile. Yeah, the kitchen cabinet is Chinese, from China. Like it, very good. The cabinet is from China. Okay. Um, what is the rent you're achieving in this property? Okay, uh, 1250 I'm sorry? $1,250. $1,250? Yes. Does that include utilities? No, it has to be utilities. Okay. And so your request is to have it reduced to six. For we pay for water, sir. Water? Oh, you pay the water? Okay. So you were asking for six hundred thousand? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And we'll just go on to the next property. Is it safe? Yeah, he still has to read everything out. Drive East, parcel ID number 08000541000. It's also in the Bahrain's neighborhood area. Two story row house, four dwelling units, uh, constructed in 2018, 3,528 square feet of living area, full basement with basement finish, uh, four full bathrooms, eight full bathrooms, four half bathrooms, 
central air conditioning um, in the garage, lot size just over 5,000 square feet, similar to the last property we discussed. Again, this one we have the commercial adjacent influence on. Uh, the 2020 assessed model value is 880000 or $249.43 per square foot. Um, and from what I can tell, it is the exact same building we just discussed. Yeah. Okay. And did you have any questions, sir? No, sir. I'd like to sir. Mr. Mazzaro? Go first. I just, I just want to reconfirm. Do you believe the assessment should be 600000 Yes. Is that what you were saying? Six or less if you can't. But, uh, <laughs> okay. No, I think uh, I'll leave it at that. Okay. And I have no questions. Did you wish to add anything, sir? No. No? Okay. Thank you for coming. No. Thank you. Thank you. Hearing back to order. And the next item on the docket is um, 2174 Gallagher. If you'd like to explain, Mr. Smith. Please state your full name. Trevor Smith. And you, sir, the evidence you're about to present is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth will help you. I do. Thank you. A Gallagher Avenue, parcel ID number 130907750. A two story side by side in the western neighborhood area, constructed in 1993. It's a living area of 2,212 square feet, full basement with no basement finish, two floor bathrooms, that's one on each side, uh, no central air conditioning, no garage, and a lot size, 3,765 square feet. Uh, purples 1 through 4 are in the Sergeant Park and Weston neighborhoods. Uh, they are a two-story, either side-by-side or duplex, constructed between 1955 and 1963. Living areas range from a low of 2,016 square feet to a high of 2, uh, 2,220 square feet. All have unfinished basements, similar to the subject. Uh, bathroom counts range from two full to two full and two half. Purple one has central air conditioning, while the other three do not. Um, and all four of the comparables have a detached multi garage. Lot sizes for the four comparables range from a low of 4,025 square feet uh, to a high of 4,997 square feet. Time adjusted sale prices range from a low of 348,500 to a high of 416,500. Or time adjusted sale price per square foot ranging from a low of $161.34. To a high of $187.61. Uh, the 2020 assessment for the subject property is at $396,000 or $179.02 per square foot. Uh, the department is recommending uh, the assessment be amended to $347,000 for this property. And that is based on. Um, it's actually based on the model value. We had uh, a little inaccuracy with this property. Um, and when I uh, adjusted that, I brought it in line with uh, 347000 which is the same value for another property we're going to be seeing today that's identical. Okay. Um, sorry, what was the adjustment, though, in regards? To the property characteristics, mm -hmm. it was a quality adjustment. We had uh, too high of a quality variable on one of them. Okay. And it was adjusted down back to average. And, uh, Start value at 347. So, was that on the condition of the entire property? Condition of the building. Of the building, yeah. yeah. And you are accepting this? We are, yes. Thank you. to 1577 Winnipeg Avenue West. Are you ready? 
to this, uh, obviously, um, our rent, our expenses, and then our cap rate. Uh, the rents are derived from CMHC, um, average rental rates for the area. Um, so the gross potential rent, you can see here, is 231252 I'm not sure if you get the same thing. We're pretty close. I believe I did. Okay. Uh, vacancy rate of 3%. Uh, giving us our effective gross income of 224314 uh, The expense rate of uh, 45.1% uh, was derived from our last appeal for this property. Um, that is the wise expense ratio submitted to us. 45.1%. I have attached it should be on the back of your information there. Providing us with a net operating income of $123,149. Um, 5% capitalization rate is model driven for the area. Providing us with an estimated market value of $2.462 million for the property. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Did you have uh, questions, Mr. Smith? Uh, so the, uh, the income workup, as, uh, as you have described it, uh, it, this is not model driven, uh, I'm gathering. CMHC rents. CMHC rents. Yeah. Uh, and the other is uh, based on some prior information, the expense ratio? Yes. Okay. And then the capitalization rate would be model driven, I guess, Perfect. based on age and area. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the subject property lying in uh, in the western uh, area, I'm gathering that uh, the year built would be would have uh, probably more of an impact on the driving that capitalization rate. Is that correct? Uh, it's based on location and it's based on age. I can't really say which one is the bigger factor. Okay. And then just looking at uh, the last page of the brief there, um, at which I gather was the submission of the uh, property owner's representative last time, they had come to a market value of uh, 1486000 Correct. Those are all of my questions. Thank you. Thank you. No questions. Nothing. Thank you. So I just have a couple. Um, excuse me, you referred um, Mr. Kupfer at the beginning of your presentation to call this scatter housing? Yes. I have not heard that term. I haven't either. I like it though. Wow. And that is, sorry, you don't have, um, you just have this map here, correct? I provided a map of the direct comparables. It should be yeah. the first map, and then the second map um, is a map of the um, comparables, the direct comparables for the income appraisal. Yeah. So scatter the term. It just means different <coughs> types of housing all on one big parcel. Um, 
not in a nice even row house or anything like that. So does that mean that the lot size vary? So it's all in the corner. Are, are, there, are there like actual lots for all the different homes? And it's one big lot, one big parcel. Um, they aren't even all facing the same direction. Like some will be facing this way, some are facing the street, some are more towards the back of the parcel. It's like 68,000 square feet. So it's scattered housing. Curious. Yeah. Um, so then there's no demarcation for the people who are living there as to front yard, backyard, or who's on? Well, it's just general. And like with income, we, uh, we actually go based on bedroom count. Um, and then we drive rental rates based on that. Okay. Um, so this is Manitoba Housing. Yes. Um, can you speak to the condition of this property? Um, I can't speak to the condition, no. We, uh, we don't have an inspection uh, for any of these units recently. I can assume the um, finishings are average? Average to below average, average. average. I guess, yeah. Okay. And I'm sorry, um, Mr. Smith, I think he was asking for the previous assessment. Was it one million four? Is that what it was? Yeah. Okay. Let's reduce it to the board. I believe about 1.6 down to 1.4. Okay. Do you know what that was based on? Uh, it's 1.665 down to 1.486. Um, they used um, market rents, but when I checked them, they were pretty close to the CMHC rents. They used the actual expense ratio. Then they managed to argue for a 7.5% cap rate. And uh, we got it. Okay. Um, so then I'm going to ask you about the cap rate of 5%. That was mm -hmm. model driven? It's model driven. Um, does the city ever consider, though, that this is Manitoba housing, that they should perhaps have a second look at the cap rate? The city assesses all property as the simple market value, and then if there are any special considerations based on who owns the property, that comes out in tax exemptions or tax credits or anything like that. In terms of assessment, we just assess market value. Okay. Uh, thank you. Mr. Smith. Yes, thank you. So just uh, just to address that point um, with regard to it being Manitoba housing. So when we when we value these properties, sorry, let's go ahead. we don't have copies. We do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Thank hopefully you. we do. The two that I managed to get. Sorry, you did. Our you did. System employee. Thank you. Shuffling at the bottom. Okay. Sorry, thank you. Continue. Okay, so just uh, again with regard to that point of it being Manitoba housing, when we value the property as well, we're not uh, we're not asking for uh, reduction uh, due to the ownership of the property being public housing uh, or social housing owned by Manitoba housing. That's that's not how we value them. We're valuing it based on market value as if this property traded as of the valuation date. But the the reasoning and the theory behind uh, how we arrive at that value uh, is all valid and it's not based upon ownership. We're not saying, oh, if we're not to a housing, they should get a reduction. It's, it's the market value. So just to look at uh, a little bit of background here, and I just wanted to, I uh, wasn't sure whether the city was going to do an income approach on this or not. So. What I uh, <clears throat> have done in the agenda materials here is uh, include, uh, we have another Manitoba housing, scattered housing property at uh, 352 Pacific. We look in the agenda materials. We just had this hearing. <clears throat> uh, very similar in terms of the nature of the property. Uh, the decision is there for you. Sorry, just a moment. I want to be sure of it. Yes, 352. Okay. What? I apologize for not having page numbers. It's exceptionally difficult to get the agenda for these uh, numbered. It will be the very oh, first page okay. in the agenda following. Uh, Thank mm -hmm. you. 
following the page yes, identified Gordon. as Appendix 3. So it looks like this. It's the City of Winnipeg's brief. So uh, all I was showing here was that the city had <coughs> valued uh, virtually uh, the same same type of property using the income approach. So I wanted to be sure that the income approach was how, uh, how it was going to be addressed. So this is the city's brief. From that property, same thing, single parcel, multiple uh, buildings and different types of housing in a single unit. Uh, this one was located at 352 Pacific. There's the brief for you. Um, and following uh, Following that brief uh, is uh, the decision. Uh, our net operating incomes were the same, and the decision was based on a 6% cap rate for that. The couple of addenda decisions following that uh, were from very similar types of uh, <coughs> row housing with multiple buildings on a single site from uh, that same time period, and the, the cap rates utilized in those or decided in those were six and six and a quarter percent. So let's move on to the subject property here, 1377 Winnipeg Avenue West. Uh, as stated, it is a, a mixed housing project developed by Manitoba Housing in that western area. Um, <clears throat> it is a mix of uh, two and three bedroom units, 14 two bedroom units and seven three bedroom units for a total of 21. It's located on a single parcel, so if the property were to sell, it would sell as a whole. Uh, the property itself is in below average condition. Uh, now I haven't asked for any change with regard to average rents that we've applied to it uh, in terms of uh, the rental rates. Uh, I've simply applied uh, market average when we get to that. But do keep in mind that the condition of the property uh, is uh, in below average for a property of this age and, uh, and location. As you can see, the basements are not finished uh, as well. And the basic uh, Manitoba housing, when they build their properties, their mandate is to supply affordable housing to either families or uh, low-income individuals. Um, and uh, they are rented out based, uh, based upon income, the income of the residents. You need to have a low enough income in order to qualify to uh, get uh, into the program in order to get a unit. And then your rent is based on a percentage of the income that, uh, that the family uh, or the individual has. Um, so the housing that's supplied uh, is of a basic nature uh, and tends to be on the smaller side in terms of uh, the type of unit that it is. So if it's a two-bedroom unit, typically it's smaller than what would, one would find in the marketplace of something that would be uh, located in the same area, built at the same time, etc. And then the finishes of our, are of a basic nature. And given the uh, segment of the marketplace that uh, Manitoba Housing serves, the wear and tear on these properties does exceed what one normally finds in the marketplace. So the, uh, the condition of the property, property and properties does tend to uh, wear out quicker and be uh, in a below average to poor condition. This one I would term to be in below average condition. With regard to the location of the property, if you flip to my page number 10, you can see where it's located on Winnipeg Avenue West there, just west of Pacific Industrial, north of Notre Dame Avenue, and uh, in that uh, western area. We move on to the valuation itself. As stated, we can't rely upon the in-place income as that would drive too low a market value. Not a realistic uh, projection of market value. So what we have done, and in keeping with our standard valuation for these properties, is we've looked at the CMHC averages uh, for, uh, for comparison in order to come up with appropriate rents for the subject property. So we have two and three bedroom units here. We have uh, looked at uh, the subject property is located in the Centennial area. Um, 
and we have uh, row house rents for <coughs> for that area in Centennial, as shown on page number twelve. Two bedroom units renting at eight sixty two per month, and three bedroom units renting at one thousand and twenty nine per month in that entire Centennial area. Now the Centennial area is rather big. It encompasses uh, the majority of downtown and then stretches out west to essentially where Weston terminates at Kiwaton. That's uh, the far west end of it. So you get a real mix of uh, areas there. You have South Broadway where rents would obviously be higher, new properties downtown, uh, older sections downtown, and then obviously out to Weston where we're located. The subject is in below average condition. On the rental side, we are not asking for a reduction. We have reflected this in uh, the capitalization rate that we've applied to the subject property. Um, so we've simply applied the market averages and come up with our projected rent of $231,252. Now, on the vacancy side, uh, page number 13, we've given you the market stats for uh, CMHC uh, for the appropriate time frame as well. For Centennial and the subject categories, they range between 3.5 and 4.3% with an average of 3.7. We've used a vacancy rate of 3%, I think, which is in keeping with what the city has done as well. With regard to expenses for the subject property, um, there was no income and expense uh, information that was available online, I guess, perhaps given the, how it was, is, uh, was assessed previously, maybe there was no ID that was requested from them. I'm not entirely sure what the background is there. That is probably what uh, occurred. In any case, the, the expense information for the specific property was not available. Um, <clears throat> so we need to obviously come up with an appropriate uh, level of expense for, this, for these type of properties now. Um, we have looked at uh, obviously other Manitoba housing properties. Uh, generally speaking, uh, given again uh, the, the segment of the market population that they serve, the type of housing, etc. Expenses for these properties do tend to be uh, above uh, standard market levels for market uh, multifamily properties, so they do tend to be 50% uh, and higher in terms of uh, in terms of their expense ratios for uh, as a percentage of effective gross income. Now. Looking at the type of housing itself, we have uh, multiple buildings on a single site, 20, I'm not sure how many individual buildings we have here, but each of those buildings obviously has its own roof, uh, each of them has its own hot water tank, uh, its own uh, furnace or heating system, all of the systems are individual, each of those requires maintenance. In a standard market apartment, one would have, you know, you have obviously the single roof, you have a single heating system, etc. So uh, from that individual point, uh, that does drive higher expenses for properties of this type. You also have obviously the wear and tear involved with uh, public housing. You have a larger site to maintain, so you have all the groundwork, uh, paving, uh, electrification, etc. that's required for these. So expenses are higher for uh, this type of housing category, being row housing, and then you add on to the fact that uh, the wear and tear also drives up uh, repair and maintenance costs for these types of properties. Now, that's the background. Looking at uh, the property that we had supplied uh, in the addendum materials there, 352 Pacific, if you flip to that one, in the addenda, uh, it's identified um, an aerial shot as 2A. If you look at the type of uh, type of site, uh, how the buildings are, you know, distributed, size of the property, etc., you can see that uh, it's certainly similar in nature to the subject. Uh, that particular property 
was established 77, 78, so it's similar in age, and the city's used a 55.46% expense ratio in that case for that property. Um, <clears throat> we have deferred to this amount in uh, coming up with an expense ratio for the subject based on the similar natures of the properties. So <clears throat> that uh, the distribution of units there is shown on my page number 13 as well. They had 50 units in total, and you can see the mix of them as well. And it's a mix of side by sides and duplexes. So we've applied that same expense ratio to the subject property. Moving on to capitalization rate, um, not all of you will necessarily have heard this, so I'll run through it relatively quickly, uh, but efficiently. Um, basically, if you look at my page 14, this uh, is where we begin our cap rate evidence. So looking at comparing uh, social, affordable, public housing to standard market apartments uh, is challenging and there is no direct comparisons that are not the same. Um, can't legitimately be directly compared <coughs> as social housing properties have considerable restrictions and burdens that are not present for market apartments. Uh, these include rental income restrictions, rental market restrictions, uh, smaller pool of tenants, generally additional operating expenses, as we've stated. Uh, physical condition tends to be poorer, as well as deferred maintenance. And uh, then upon any uh, projected uh, theoretical sale, um, you would have disposition restrictions in that you have uh, tenants that are in place on a legal basis with rental agreements, such that they are paying based on a percentage of their income. Uh, this would not disappear automatically. They have the legal right to remain in place until the end of their term, at which point they still have some rights and residential tenancies uh, has uh, confirmed this. So basically, um, I'll just run through another quick point before we get to what I was going to state there. If you look at the middle of the page, uh, there's a recognized expert in this field, Mr. Richard Poulton. He's an accredited appraiser, commercial appraiser from the United States. Uh, his accreditation is equivalent to what it is in Canada. And he's written a book entitled Valuation and Market Studies for Affordable Housing. In this, he states, developing a market-derived cap rate for an income-restricted property begins with an analysis of the available rates for similar unrestricted properties. Then these rates are adjusted based on the risk factors that an investor would consider in developing a cap rate. The result is a cap rate based on market factors and associated risks. In the final analysis, property tax assessment must take into account the public purpose of the project, the overall benefits and burdens, and the restricted nature of the operating rents. So essentially what is being stated is that you can't uh, directly translate market capitalization rates over to this type of housing and we need to apply a premium based on the risk factors that an investor would consider. So the basic premise is you are a sophisticated investor, you have standard market apartment A located here, immediately beside it you have social housing property B immediately beside it, all things being equal you're going to apply uh, a higher capitalization rate and a lower value to your acquisition of this based on the risk factors that, uh, that are uh, present in any acquisition of a property such as this. That's the theory behind it. Um, so our task today then is to look at market cap rates and determine what would be appropriate. What we've presented on page number 14 is uh, a range of capitalization rates in the market. This is not all the sales that are out there, but these are true cap rate sales in that these properties were acquired for the in-place net operating income. The properties had been renovated prior to sale and uh, there was no potential for these properties to be repositioned in the marketplace and the income boosted. So they were truly buying the return that they would get based on the in-place net operating income. So our range here is from a low of 5.44% up to roughly 6.65%. Um, the triple three ward property has been talked about extensively. In place, net operating income drives a 
cap rate of five and a quarter percent agreed by the city and the balance and the 5.44 is representative of the new purchasers knowledge that uh, the expenses were too high uh, in particular segments and they could operate it more efficiently which they've subsequently done so that is the marketplace yes some of them are older all of them have been renovated up to a current standard um, the triple three ward is essentially your baseline being the newest and the largest the most uh, investment worthy property so you can see our range there so that's what we see as being essentially the uh, common range of cap rates in the marketplace let's look at uh, the <coughs> Uh, main commercial brokerages trading in this particular asset class. We have both Colliers International as well as CB Richard Ellis. If you look at page number 15, you can see the information from Colliers. They're essentially stating a flat line with regard to capitalization rates for apartments between the 2016 and the 2018 years. Uh, if you look at the Winnipeg category we have roughly five and a quarter percent to six percent in 2016 for low-rise apartments and five to six percent in 2015 for <coughs> low-rise apartments again from Collier's CB Richard Ellis similarly uh, has a plot line that are indicating in 2016 low-rise cap rates in Winnipeg were five and a half to six percent for low-rise A 5.75 to 6 for low rise B, uh, with the exact same stats for 2018. The chart at the very bottom right hand corner of page 16 is historical Winnipeg cap rates. If you look at the multifamily line, the bottom one, you can see that it's stable from roughly 2014 through the valuation date. So that is the marketplace um, at a minimum based on. The <laughs> information uh, that we presented regarding the uh, market itself um, and looking at the, the ranges presented by the main commercial brokerages, which are representative of, representative of investment grade, <clears throat> uh, investment grade uh, capitalization rates. So the subject property uh, would not fall within that range. Uh, you're acquiring um, uh, very unusual type of property uh, with higher expenses, uh, poorer condition. Generally, uh, you would achieve lower rental rates, etc. Um, your risk factors here, as I've already presented, are significantly higher. So I'm not asking for a 7.5% cap rate, but certainly there is a premium to what the, you would pay in the normal market. Um, so if the high end of the range as stated by the brokerages is at 6%, um, certainly you're going to fall above that. So we have applied a 6.25% cap rate in our analysis. And this gives us a final market value of $1,599,000. The addenda materials, I think I've probably already run through, uh, and they're there for you to review if you wish. And I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you. Uh, did you request the actual expense information for this property? Um, I did not have an opportunity to request that information in the, the time frame. Okay. Um, does it stand to reason then if these properties have deferred maintenance and they're in poor condition that they likely aren't spending 55 or 6%? <coughs> Um, on repairs and maintenance, as is supported by the actual financials that I provided for you? Well, I didn't have an opportunity to view those until uh, this particular time. Generally speaking with Manitoba housing properties, uh, the wear and tear is, is greater than one uh, experiences in the normal marketplace, and they are, in my experience, generally the expenses fall uh, above what the city has projected in their income uh, analysis for them. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, Mr. Manscott? Uh, yes, the, 
the 55.46% expense ratio rate that you've used is based on this other property, right? The 352 class specific? It is, yes. And that's nothing else. This is you just decided to use that thing. Well, in the absence of information from the, the subject itself, uh, we had to make a we have to make a, a reasonable estimate. So I looked at a similar similar category property, which was this uh, 352 Pacific one, um, with mixed housing of a similar size on a single parcel, etc. The city had applied uh, the 55.46 in their analysis of that, and I think it was roughly what the actual expenses were, if I remember. But so in your opinion, the 55.46 is based on your knowledge of other similar properties, which you probably have seen, that's, that's a reasonable sentence? It's a reasonable estimate, yeah. We've, uh, 50% certainly for row housing would be a low end of what we would see in the market. And given, given uh, uh, the nature of these properties, they do tend to be higher than that. So I, I felt that it was reasonable. I've seen some. Uh, city valuations using slightly higher expense ratios than that too, but I didn't go to that level. So by, by using our, our higher expense rate, it drives down the NO, NOI, like it, it gives you a lower NOI, right? It does. Uh, which decreases the, uh, the market value. And then in addition to that, you give it a higher cap rate, which decreases the value further. So you're, let me just speak to that. So you're, you're comparing our valuation to the city's, and I, I have no knowledge of what the city's valuation does. And what, what we projected here is based on, based on what would it rent for on the market. And I feel that I probably over, slightly overestimated uh, by not asking for a slight reduction based on condition. So the expense ratio side is certainly based in fact I don't have the particular uh, details from the subject to back that up, but uh, I've looked at many, many, many of these properties now, and generally they do fall in that range. So we're not driving down the NOI, we're showing what a realistic NOI would be. And then what what would an investor pay for this property when we've gone through the capitalization rate detail. So all my questions. Thank you. Mr. Krauss? Um, when were the pictures taken that are in your brief? They were taken this summer. Uh, were they taken by you? They were not taken by me, no. But one of your colleagues? They were taken by our firm, yes. Yeah. Um, and Mr. Kupfer, I'm just going to redirect to you. Um, Your uh, brief was model driven, correct? The direct comparison value, the 1.852 million, is model driven. Mm -hmm. My brief is not model driven, no. Okay. Thank you. Did either of you have a wish for estimation of this property? No, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to 2176 Gallagher. <coughs> Whenever you're ready, Mr. Cutter. 2176 Gallagher Avenue, parcel ID number 130 the Weston neighborhood area. It's a two-story side-by-side dwelling constructed in 1993, 2,212 square feet of living area, full basement with no basement finish, two full bathrooms, no central air, no garage, a lot size of 3,765 square feet. Comparables one through four are the Sergeant Park and Weston area. They're all two-story, uh, two-unit dwellings, uh, comparable to the subject. Constructed between 1955 and 1963, living areas range from a low of 2,016 square feet to 2,220 square feet. 
all have full basements with no basement finish, two full bathrooms to two full bathrooms and two half bathrooms. Comparable one has the air conditioner, while the remainders do not, um, and all four comparables have a detached garage. Lot sizes ranging from a low of 4,025 square feet to a high of 4,997 square feet. Time adjusted sale prices range from a low of 348,500 to a high of 416,500. Uh, or price per square foot ranging from $161.34 to a high of $187.61. Um, and the department is requesting that the $347,000 uh, be confirmed. This is the same number that was um, recommended for 2174 A Gallagher. They're the exact same property from as far as I can tell. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and Mr. Smith? We were just asking that it be confirmed. Elgin Avenue West, parcel ID number 130-710-91500. Again, this is in the Weston area. It's a two-story side-by-side, constructed in 1993, similar to the last property we discussed. Um, this one is slightly larger at 2,288 square feet. Again, with the full basements, no basement finish, two full baths, uh, no central air, no garage, and a lot size of just over 5,000 square feet. Uh, the four comparables I've provided are the same that we just ran through for the previous property. Um, the 2020 assessment for this one is set at 369,000, um, and the department will recommend that that be reduced to 359,000 to bring it in line with the other two recommendations today, the same price per square foot. Sorry, I missed your value there. 359. Thanks. Accepting the recommendation? We are, yes. Thank you. Sorry, um, Pamela, if you have any questions, just jump in. The reduction was based on uh, the comparables available. Um, these, again, are uh, natural housing properties, so they aren't in the best, uh, best condition. Thank you. Move on to uh, 836 Burnell. 836 A Burnell Street, parcel ID number 130-302-33000. It's in the Daniel McIntyre neighborhood area. Uh, it's a two-story side-by-side dwelling constructed in 1978. 1,592 square feet of living area, uh, full basement with no basement finish, two full bathrooms, no central air, and no garage, uh, an assessed lot size of just over 3,000 square feet. Um, the department is recommending uh, 311,000 for this one. Based on? Uh, again, we had an issue uh, with incorrect characteristics within our model. So once it was adjusted, this is what's being produced. In terms of condition? In terms of condition, I'd consider it to be average again, similar to the others. Okay, Mr. Smith, you're at, um, accepting this recommendation? Yes. Any questions? No questions. And we will move on to 440 Pacific Avenue. <clears throat> Pacific Avenue, 
Parcel ID number 130-7155-0500. So in the Centennial neighborhood area, um, similar to uh, 1377 Winnipeg, this is a scatter house uh, property owned by Manitoba Housing. Um, the total living area, as you can see, all the units together is 28,624 square feet. Constructed in 1979, um, it's about 68,000 square foot lot. 26 total units contained on one property. Um, it's a combination of row house and single dwellings. Um, I just included the average price for the one there is $132,192. Uh, again, I prepared an income brief for you. Um, this model driven value of 3.6 isn't supported in either an income appraisal or a direct comparison appraisal, so I'm not preventing that value. Um, see the total number of units, that's 26. Uh, again, if we're using CMHC rents, trend rent should be down or pretty close uh, to potential, uh, gross potential rent of 296,352. 3% uh, vacancy, giving you an effective gross income of 287,461. Again, I've applied the actual expense ratio uh, that was received during the previous uh, appeal for this property at 50.2%, as well as the model driven cap rate of 5%, uh, which gives us a value of 2.863 million. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Smith, questions? Um, so for this property, uh, just looking at the valuation again, that 50.2% uh, expense ratio, that's, uh, that's from the prior uh, appellant's uh, brief, I gather? Correct. Okay. Um, and the gross potential grant, that was, uh, I see where it's different on that and higher on that. That was based on CMHC? Yes, I okay. so. Um, those are, and then cap rate, of course, is model driven. Yes. Um, the subject property is located um, in that north centennial area. But it, that uh, I know immediately on the other side of uh, the CPR line there, there's uh, the city's model produces, uh, it attributes a premium to the cap rate and drives it up. Uh, that's not done in this uh, particular segment, I guess. I don't believe so. No. Okay. Those are all of my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Azicott? Just, just clarification, are you asking for a, an assessment of three million six or, or two million nine based on is it based on this? I'm basing yeah, my my uh, best my best assessment um to the income for this property and that would be two point eight six so three that's, what that's what I'm recommending. Okay. Okay. That's all my questions. Mr. Bradford? So are you recommending a 2.86 million assessment as opposed to the 3.6 here? Yes, sir. Okay. Sounds good, thanks. You do have one follow-up question. Sure. You didn't have a chance to uh, inspect this has a been inspected. Do you know the last time it was? Just curiosity. Oh. I really don't. Okay. I'd say not any time recently. Okay. Um, again, this is just a curious curiosity. Mm -hmm. um, just having been on panels with lots of these types of properties, it doesn't seem the city ever goes out to look at them. It could be, honestly. Okay. I know you're quite new to the department. I was just curious about that. Well, it's not even that. Is that these properties will typically go to our commercial mm -hmm. um, assessors. Mm -hmm. This one, 
I asked about it, why it's Res MB instead of commercial row housing. Um, the answer I got was essentially because none of the buildings themselves have more than five units and never got tagged as a commercial building, so it's stuck in our residential model. Interesting. And, uh, that's why I'm here today. I was wondering actually why you were keeping these properties, <laughs> but okay, that answers the question. Thank you. Mr. Smith, go ahead. Yeah, I just had the one follow-up question for twenty for twenty eighteen. Was it uh, property was appealed? Was it reduced to the one million nine oh nine? It was yeah. based on the the prior account. It was yeah. Okay, thank you. Shall I proceed now? Ah uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. So similarly to thirteen seventy seven Winnipeg. Um, 440 Pacific is uh, is mixed housing as stated. We have 26 total units. If you look at uh, my page number three, you can see the breakout. <coughs> Here there's a bit wider range. We have uh, one one bedroom, one two bedroom, 13 three bedroom units, five four bedroom units, and six five bedroom units. Now in the marketplace, uh, the demand for uh, three, four, and five bedroom units is uh, is considerably lower than your typical uh, one and two bedroom uh, units uh, and or bachelor in the marketplace. Uh, if you look at properties that are constructed, it's very rare that they have three, four, and five bedroom units certainly in, uh, in them. So this will typically drive um, more vacancy than normal. Um, and then from an investment perspective, if you have a more, uh, more speculative or uh, if you have a property that's uh, more apt to have vacancy, obviously that's going to have an impact on uh, what you're going to be willing to pay for that property and what cap rate you would use and deriving your market value that you would pay for it as well. So uh, as I had with the prior property, uh, I've included the 352 Pacific Avenue uh, information from the city brief, uh, so that's in the immediate area of the subject property. Uh, we were in agreement on net operating income for that property, and it was decided at a 6% cap rate. Uh, again, very similar type of property in the exact same area. Now. Our cap rate was not 6%, uh, but that was what was decided by the panel. The subject property, um, again, in slightly below or below average condition. Uh, if you look at the photos, uh, you can see the patching that has had to be required to be done to the walls of this one particular unit. You can see the basic nature of the finishes in terms of flooring and the condition of such and some of the mold growth that they have in uh, a couple of the units there. Um, the basement, uh, again, not being finished and uh, uh, is essentially reflective of what the, the whole property was like. Um, location is shown on page number nine. And our, uh, we can move it into the actual valuation of the property beginning on page 10. So again, we present CMHC uh, <clears throat> information with regard to average rents. Um, we have, uh, so if the subject property again falls within the centennial area, um, we have applied uh, the market averages for each of these categories and we come up to a slightly higher Income the projection of 316,644 um, based on those CMHC averages. Now again, the condition would be uh, below average, but we haven't asked for a deduction on the income side. Again, we're addressing that in uh, the establishment of the cap rate that's applied to the income stream for the subject. So. Moving on to the vacancy, again, we've used 3% supported by the market stats. The expense allowance, uh, again, looking at the 352 uh, Pacific Avenue example, we have deferred to a 55.46% expense ratio in uh, coming up with the uh, 
<coughs> the expense allowance for the subject property. Now, looking at that one in relation to this one, that one was built in 77, 78. This one is as a year of 1979 on it, essentially the same thing. Similar size, uh, similar distribution of units in that they run from one through four bedrooms uh, as well uh, in virtually the exact same location. So certainly the expense ratio uh, from that property would be applicable to the subject in uh, an expense modeling. Moving on to the capitalization rate, I'm not going to run through my discussion on this twice. We have the same type of property uh, in a very similar type of location. Uh, this property, and we have the map to show you exactly where it is. It's in that North Centennial area running towards uh, the uh, Isabel Salter uh, Bridge there essentially in uh, Towards the, towards the tracks, so it's uh, certainly a lower socioeconomic area. You have uh, industrial immediately to the north. There's a lot of issues in that particular area. We have three, four, and five bedroom units. Uh, it's in the condition that it, that it is in. Um, any sophisticated investor would apply a premium to their cap rate. So assuming that the high end of the range uh, for argument's sake, is 6%, um, absolutely there would be a premium to the high end of that range. So we have attributed a slight cap rise to 6.25% in uh, coming up with our market value for the subject. And this gives us a final market value of 2189000 And I'm happy to answer questions. Questions, Mr. Kupfer? these past decisions that you've included? Mm -hmm. Am I correct in assuming this represents the high end of what you've been able to get from the board? You're not including any of the five and a quarter decisions or five and a half decisions? Uh, generally, uh, decisions that fell in that five, uh, five and a half for properties that are larger, we have appealed to the municipal board and we're not in agreement with. So there were some decisions that went astray, but uh, this is not the top end of the range. We had six and a half and six point three five, six and three quarters too, in uh, some areas immediately north of this. Okay. I have no other questions. Thank you, um, Mr. Massacott. No questions. Uh, Just in regards to your pictures in your brief, mm -hmm. I see them again. They were taken by someone in your firm. That's correct. And this past summer? That's correct. Okay, no further questions. Do either of you have a wish for estimation on this property? No, okay, thank you. Thank you. So we will move on to 525A Pritchard Avenue. And Mr. Cuthbert, whenever you're ready. R25A Pritchard Avenue, parcel ID number 140-208-16100. Uh, it's a two-story row house with four dwelling units in the William White neighborhood area. Total living area of 3,384 square feet. Full basement with no basement finish. Four full bathrooms, uh, no central air conditioning and no garage. The lot size just over 7,000 square feet. Comparables one through four. Are spread out a little bit. Dufferin, Norwood East, Burroughs, Key Wayne, and Weston, but they are all two story, um, either side by side of row house, four unit dwellings. Uh, constructed between 1906 and 1986, living areas ranging from a low of 2,940 to a high of 4,080 square feet. Variables 1, 3, and 4 all have full basements, while comparable 2 is only a part area. Bathroom counts range um, as displayed before you. Um, none of the comparables have central air, similar to the subject. None of the comparables have a garage, similar to the subject. Lot sizes range from a low of 6,084 square feet to a high of 7,790 square feet. Time adjusted sale prices for the four comparables range from a low of 440,300 
to a high of 692000 or $120.93 per square foot to $235.37 per square foot. The 2020 assessment for the subject property is at a $483,000 or $142.73. I uh, just want to point out we've got an effective age on uh, the property. You'll see it's from 1977 to 1987. Um, there's a fire. Fire repair permit is from 2014, so the fire would have been around that time. Um, just says renovations for the permit appear to be completed. Uh, final inspection is actually 2012 uh, by funding property development. The permit value, uh, the declared permit value for what it's worth, is 115,000. Uh, and based on um, based on these renovations, the assessor at the time added the 10-year age variant. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Smith? Uh, just, just very quickly. So looking at uh, the comps that are there, uh, I see comp number two um, is located in Norwood, and it was built in 06 with an effective age of 56. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, and then the time-adjusted sale price there is $235 a square foot. So that's probably indicative of the area that it's in more so than, than the age, right? That it's Correct. driving. Okay. Yeah. So when I look at the other comps that are there, um, 301, so comp number one in the Dufferin area, uh, essentially the same as William White. Um, and then comp number four in the Weston area, those would be the two most similar areas to the subject, would they not? Yeah, as, as shown on the map, one, one, three, and four, um, probably all within a five, five or six minute drive of the subject. Okay. Um, that's, uh, those are all of my questions. Thank you. Thank you. So you're not asking for confirmation on this one? Uh, not specifically, no. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vesicott? No questions. Mr. Bradford? No. No questions. Uh, you did not have a chance to inspect this property. Um, do you have anywhere in your notes uh, as to the condition? Um, no, the only inspection was uh, at that time in 2014. Um, it was an exterior inspection. The property is tenant occupied, so the assessor didn't even get on the inside of it. Um, the adjustment was just made based on what would have been described in the, uh, the permit for repairs. Whenever there's a fire, a fire repair permit, they've got a pretty extensive list of what's being done. So that's, okay. that's what it was based on. Um, sorry, do you have a copy of the permit or what was done or do you involve kitchen and bathrooms? Uh, it's a pretty extensive list. Maybe I should just leave it with you instead of reading it out. Sure, if you can. That's yeah, of course. Um, do you have the MLS listings on your comps? Um, I do. I just have it with a different package because I'm using the same uh, comparables for a couple of these fourplexes here. St. Clair. The 2017 sale was a private sale, but there's a public one in 2014, so I've got the listing for that. And okay. then I've also got the one for Langford and Railway. And I assume you don't really want to see Eugenia anyways. No, that's fine. Thank you. Um, just, so with regards to the, um, the rentals that were done, I'm assuming that they would have been basic? Basic bringing it back to where it was before. It would have just been replacing 1977 materials with 2012 materials. significant uh, computer system issue that arose yesterday which destroyed our 
Uh, our server essentially and uh, information from the last couple of days. So I unfortunately don't have any material to present on these. Um, uh, I just have, I guess, a couple of comments with regard to these. Um, looking at uh, the subject property being in that uh, William White area, um, yes, uh, I gather that it had a fire uh, that has had some renovation uh, done to it. However, it is Manitoba Housing. It is located in the William White area. Um, it's not necessarily going to drive the value up uh, significantly. So when I look at the comparables that are presented here, I would just suggest that the value would be closer to comparables number one and four. Now, I'm not going to put a value on the property as I did not have uh, the opportunity to go through uh, a specific uh, uh, in-depth look at it, and that would be inappropriate, but I feel that your value would, uh, would be closer to that uh, uh, the values of those two comparables then 142 that it's 142 dollars per square foot that it's currently uh, assessed at. Those are my only comments. Okay. Uh, any questions? Mm -hmm. Mr. Pepper? Um No questions. Just I guess I'd like to bring attention to comparables one and four both um, Units. They're in different neighborhoods, but they both have the commercial, uh, uh, or at least comparable four has your commercial adjacent influence. Comparable one, we call it the external corner. Medium traffic, it's on the corner of Selkirk and St. Clair, which might be a slight detractor as well. That's all. Okay, thank you. Mr. Masakoff? No questions. Mr. Brassett? I missed your point about uh, this the price per square foot you're sort of suggesting well so just yeah, in terms it has of a, because it's uh, Manitoba housing property uh, not because it's a Manitoba housing property but because of because of uh, the location and then obviously uh, typically the condition of these is uh, is below average now um, I had done some work and pulled up duplex and multifamily sales in that area, but I don't have that information available to rely upon to suggest a particular value. But in looking at the comps that are available here today, I would suggest it would be closer to the value of those two. But I take Mr. Comfort's point with regard to uh, any uh, other influences. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kupfer, I'm just going to redirect to you. Are your are the uh, three comps that you're relying on are those Manitoba housing? No. So, for instance, um, just reading your comp on 150 Langford. Um, states here excellent potential for condo conversion. Uh, newer roof plus other upgrades. I would assume that would be something that you would not be reading on a Manitoba housing property. Uh, well, this house. Sorry, I'm sorry, that's not really a question, that's an observation. Sorry. Well, based on the repairs that would have been done after the fire, I'd suggest that it would have probably have had a lot of those I know. Uh, upgrades. Except that was done in 2014. Uh, 2012, our assessor went up there in 2014. Uh, so, um, sorry, Mr. Smith, so you're looking um, more at the dollar, or the um, per square foot on comp one and four? That is my suggestion to the board, yes. Thank you. Um, thirteen. We'll move on to thirteen twenty-five Arlington. Whenever you're ready. 
1325 Arlington Street, parcel ID number 1400-271-3000. It's in the Dufferin neighborhood area, similar to the previous property. It's a two-story row house, four dwelling units, constructed in 1978, 3,840 square feet. Uh, this one does not have a basement, it's a surface foundation. Uh, four full bathrooms, no air conditioning and no garage. Uh, comparables are the same comparables we just went through. We've already got the MLS listings for them. Uh, the 2020 assessment uh, for the subject property is currently set at $421,000 or $109.64. Um, given that there's no effective age attributed to the property, uh, there's no basement either. <coughs> That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Smith? We're just asking for it to be confirmed. And uh, we can move on to 483 Dutton. Three Dufferin Avenue, parcel ID number 1400206350. In the Dufferin neighborhood area, again, it's a two story row house, four dwelling units, constructed in 1979, 3,840 square feet. This one does have a full basement, although it is not finished. Four full bathrooms, no air conditioning, and no garage. Lot size of 7,352 square feet. Um, the 2020 assessed value for this property is at $528,000 or $137.50 per square foot. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Smith? I have no questions. Oh, oh. You're, you're not going to ask for a confirmation on this one? Uh, but similarly to the other one, again, given the area and the comps, we would just suggest it's closer in value to one and four. But that's really all that I have to, uh, my comments are the same as for the last one. Okay. And that's all you wish to say and you didn't have questions? I have no questions. No. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Mazzacone? No questions. I don't either. Okay. Um, and again, comments one through four are not meant to balance them, correct? Correct. Same, same comparables. We've been using probably four units. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And 734 Tache. Whenever you're ready. 734 Tache Avenue, parcel ID number 0606107300. This one is in the North St. Boniface area. Uh, two-story row house. This one is actually three units. So each unit is 812 square feet. Um, full basement with no basement finish. Each unit has one full bathroom. No central air uh, and no garage. Lot size is 6,950 square feet. Commercial adjacent influence, internal corner like traffic and the park and the river across the street. Um, I use some different comparables uh, for this one. Uh, comparable one on Keeley side uh, is a three unit uh, row house similar to the subject, although in a uh, vastly inferior location. Uh, constructed in 1970, 3,456 square feet total. Um, there are one and, a half bed, uh, one and a half bathroom units, no AC in the garage. Comparables two to four uh, are essentially the exact same unit, single unit, but in different areas of the city. So you can see 812 square feet, constructed in 1976. Um, it's essentially identical to the subject property. Uh, no basement finish, one full bathroom. Comparables two and three have air conditioning, comparable four doesn't. Uh, no fireplaces and no garages. Uh, time adjusted sale price. Um, comparable one, 515,000, obviously is all inclusive for the three units. Variables two to four, uh, time adjusted sale price of 173,000 to 284,000. 
or time adjusted sale price per square foot, uh, ranging from $199.77 to $226.97 for comparables two to four, while comparable one is down at $149.02. The 2020 assessment for the subject property is set at $501,000 or $205.67 per square foot. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, Mr. Smith? Uh, no, we're just asking for confirmation. Okay, thank you. Uh, panel questions? No. Nope. No? Okay. Okay, and this hearing is closed. And thank you both for your time. Thank you very much.